Now we've seen climate crazes disrupt art exhibitions, vandalise art exhibitions and engage in all sorts of other loony behaviour from super gluing themselves to roads to dangling from tall buildings. But is this a first? A bunch of climate catastrophists gatecrash Sweden's Strictly Come Dancing program before a heroic camera operator stepped in. Have a look. I love him or her. That was just. Do you think that's deliberate, Rachel? Oh, yes, I it do. looks pretty deliberate. It, it was to a me. very clean <laughs> shot indeed. He did not miss. Very exact. Yes. <laughs> Now, here is some hyperbole from the racist or race-obsessed, depends on who you ask, ABC. Here is their voice referendum correspondent, Dan Boccia. Um, and let's listen to what he's got to say here. Mm. Right now, we are facing an existential threat of the, the divides within race in Australia, and we're seeing that everywhere. Really? Really? Um... What country is he living in? How is that? How have I missed this? Because, I don't know, last time I checked, I'm a woman of colour and I don't feel like I'm under threat, so. No, I don't, I don't know that that's really a good summary of it. But this went on the ABC completely unchallenged. Mm. And this is the problem with the ABC. A lot of things do go unchallenged. But this uh, reporter is the voice correspondent and he's actually... Sure, it'd be this. balanced. So, so really uh, balanced. let's see more reports <laughs> in the future and see that they do have balance and impartiality. Oh, so. You are a wishful <laughs> thinker indeed. Now, talking about race success, let's hear from this completely rational woman, not at all a lefty losing it. If you're white, yes, you are racist, even if you think you're woke. We all benefit from oppression. Pretending you're not racist only makes racism grow. Oh, dear. Now, perhaps this next lefty losing it was talking about that white woman we just saw because she claims that all white women, that's you, Soph, mm. are dangerous. It's truly amazing to me how fast the narrative changes. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. White women are one of the most dangerous groups in the United States and abroad. At this point, we've pretty much all seen the video of the city bike incident between the black guy and the white woman. The black guy claimed that he bought the bike. The white woman claimed that she bought the bike. It was a tug of war match. But notice how white people were laying in wait for some little nugget of information that was going to absolve this white woman of taking accountability for the harm that she put these boys in. Whiteness is a cult, and they will always come to the defense of their cult members. This evidence that people are now getting on here to push to say that this white woman is innocent actually doesn't prove anything at all. But it does prove the lengths that some of y'all will go to. Well, there you go. So if I need some sort of protection from you because you're white, you're dangerous. Why are you like this, Sophie? Isn't that just an <laughs> awful way to sum up white people? I mean, and imagine seeing everything through race. I actually find that pretty offensive, Rita. Well, it's racist is what it is. I mean, if, if you substitute the word white for any other nationality, any other colour, any other religion other than Christian, uh, it would be absolutely unacceptable to talk like but that But some anyway. people may argue because that she's saying white that you can't be racist to well, white people. Of course they say that. Anybody who says that is a moron. So that is always my test. If you're saying something and you're wondering, is this racist, substitute the word white for, I don't know, black, Indian, whatever you like. And if you're not going to, willing to say that sentence, then maybe you should just rethink your world view. Now, this is serious. We know that woke... The woke mind virus, let's call it that, has taken hold in a number of industries and sadly the legal profession is not immune. Let's hear from the student chosen to give a commencement speech at City University of New York's Law School. This just happened a couple of weeks ago. Now, she claims that white supremacy is at the basis of laws in America and that American institutions are fascist. The law is a manifestation of white supremacy that continues to oppress and suppress people in this nation and around the world. We join this institution. 
that was the ungrateful Fatima Musa Mohammed, whose education was paid for by the taxpayers she so clearly despises. Sophie, she talked for about 12, 13 minutes there. It was anti-Semitic comments there, including nonsense about Israel indiscriminately raining bullets and bombs on Palestinians. Uh, just really ugly not just anti-Semitic, but anti-American, to, to, to describe the country as essentially rooted in white supremacy and fascism is just so warped. It's pretty serious stuff that she's saying, Rita. But unfortunately, law schools all around the world, including here in Australia, we're seeing them become more and more political and these types of addresses are not unusual. I, I was at my recent uh, law reunion and they had several people get up uh, pro-voice, sa saying, you know, the voice is going to be a great thing. This is at a law school event. Well, at least with lawyers, uh, it's been said that the, the voice will be a lawyer's picnic. So maybe they're talking from the hip pockets more so than anything <laughs> else. Now, even Mayor Eric Adams has been critical of this speech, but he was very gentle with his criticism. But Republican Lee Zeldin said, raging anti-Semitism has fully consumed the City University of New York until the administration is overhauled and all Jewish students and faculty are welcome again, taxpayer funding must be immediately halted. And I can tell you there's plenty of people who agree with him there. And uh, we're still seeing aggressive men and some confused women continue to disrupt the Let Women Speak events around the world. This time it was London a couple of days ago. I'm proud to be here supporting women. You're obviously scared to show your face. You're and let's check in on Dylan Mulvaney who has gone from being a gay man to a straight woman to now being a lesbian but not just any lesbian, a lesbian with male anatomy who wants to become pregnant. Confused? Well, have a listen. So I recently told my parents that I may be a little bit romantically interested in women. And that was a big shock for them considering the past 10 years of coming out as gay, then queer, then non-binary, then trans. And I think it was just a bit of a shock. So I tell my dad and he goes, well, I would love to see you get a woman pregnant. And I said... Oh, no, no, no. She would be getting me. Is that serious? Because we're supposed to take it seriously. You're not allowed to mock that. Is he? But is he? Is that a joke? Is it a performance thing? What, what do you think? I think it's attention seeking, Rita. And every uh, few days, something like this comes out from Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, I think he's absolutely seeking attention. He wants these videos to go viral and we all talk about it. But I actually think he is serious. Well, the impact is undeniable. Of course, Dylan Mulvaney was the person used for for the Bud Light endorsement, which is basically seeing the co uh, the company decimated, and um, Nike, a bunch of other corporates have have turned to Dylan Mulvaney for their promotion. Very bizarre. And finally, the women of the View never miss a chance to white splain racism to accomplish black folk who choose not to identify as victims. Apparently, that's not acceptable. Please explain, Joy. And he's one of these guys who, you know, he's like Clarence Thomas, black Republican who believes in pulling yourself by your bootstraps, rather than, to me, understanding the systemic racism that African Americans face in this country and other minorities. He doesn't get it, neither does uh, Clarence. Right. And that's why they're Republicans. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure Clarence Thomas needs that racism explained to him by some uh, redhead woman on The View. Oh, I'm sure he probably doesn't, Rita. I mean... <laughs> Uh, that was just ridiculous <laughs> trying to explain that, didn't you think? Well, it, and it is actually, it's not just paternalistic, patronising, it is just so stupid to pre present this argument that if you're not obsessed about race and your victimhood, you somehow are blind and, and joy can see what you can't see. Give me a break. Sophie Ellsworth, always a pleasure. Thank you for Thank joining you, me. Rachel.